How to make a hexagonal box part 2, making the lid. In the previous example, I folded over one eighth of the paper to make the tab which fitted into the other side of the box. In this case, I'm folding over a little bit more. In fact, I'm folding over the same size as the side of the box that I made in the first part. This means that this one is going to be a little bit smaller because I'm folding over a bit more. So now that I've folded over one side of the box, or rather the tab that's going to fit into the other side of the box, I can check that it's neatly folded. It looks good. So now I can start folding into thirds, like I did last time, to form the six sides. As you can see, the side that I've folded over now is the same size as one side of the box that I made previously. You can see the other side is the same size which means I fold it over evenly. So, time to fold it into thirds. Again, I make the S shape. And then I adjust the edges so that it's folded exactly into thirds. pinch the edges, and then turn over and repeat on the other side. Now, in the previous example, my hands were in the way so you couldn't see how to fold in the base of the box, but I think this time you'll have a clearer view. Right, so now I've folded both sides into thirds, so now I can crease those, those third lines exactly the same way as I did in the previous one. But again, they'll be slightly smaller because I've folded over a slightly larger part for the, for the extra tab, the seventh side. Now that I've creased it into thirds, I'm going to make sixths by dividing each of the thirds by two folding it in half. Actually this side I'm going to fold in the other direction so that I don't have a problem with the extra tab um, getting hung up on the inside. There we go. That's one third. And as you can see, this time the extra side is just exactly the same size as the rest. Okay, so mathematically it's a little bit bigger, but the difference isn't practically important. And now the last fold. And I have a concertina fold of seven folds. And as you can see, it ends up just a little bit smaller than the previous one. Right, again, now I have to mark out the height at which I'm going to fold the bottom panels. And in the same way as last time, I have to fold in a corner that's at the one side, it's the width of two panels, and I fold it in so that the, the tip of the corner is on the crease dividing the two panels, and that's the height at which I'm going to fold it. So I've marked that height there, and then on the other side I do the same so that I can get a nice parallel fold. And just in case the last panel is a different size, you'll see I've folded it over so that I've taken two even panels. And again, I mark the end without creasing the fold that I'm making there. because that's just for measurement. So now I can fold the base panels from the two marks that I made, put it flat to get a nice even crease, line it up so that, so that each of the creases that I'm folding over lines up at the top.
So now I want the more colorful side of the box to be on the outside, so I'm turning it around, folding it inwards. And now I'm ready to start folding them in, in triangles. So again, in each case, I'm folding the diagonal of the rectangle that's formed by the base panel. You'll see this a bit more clearly in a moment. And again, it's possible to just fold the diagonal in each time because it's a, uh, it's a clear rectangle that you can just fold the diagonal. But I find it easier to fold it in the shape that the box is going to be. It helps the fold form neatly without having any, any other folds happen at the same time. And you can also make sure that you're folding it in the right direction and you're not um, going in the opposite diagonal by accident. And the last one I just fold over because there's no interference from the other panels. And now in this case, the you'll see the last panel is the same size as the rest of the box, so I don't need to, to mark it separately to find out what angle to fold it into. So that's the second last panel being folded over. And now the last one on the diagonal. So now each of the rectangular base panels has been folded along its diagonal in such a way that they can interlock when they fold back. So now I'm folding over the tip of the box, uh, the, the bottom edge of the box, and I fold in so that it's just a little bit, maybe two millimeters from where the base panels start, so that once I've folded the base panels down, they can fit in under the, uh, under the side, which I folded down there. You'll see I folded in the, uh, the small edge of this box. I folded it in a little bit less, which means that the side of the box will be a bit higher than the than the base. So this can be a lid which can fit inside the base and then can be pulled out. Now this is one of this is the first tricky part of making this construction is to get the two ends to interlock nicely. So the two panels that have been created separately uh, so the, you've got seven panels and you've got six sides, so the two have to interlock. And getting them, getting them to fit in nicely uh, can be a bit of a struggle, can be a bit of a, uh, an effort. But uh, once, they, once they fit in, they'll slide in quite nicely. There we go. So now we have a hexagonal shape. And what remains now is to push this, the the base panels down so that they all so that each one interlocks with the next one. So the way I do this is to push from the top while twisting, but then you'll see it sometimes is a bit of a, a bit of a struggle to get them all to fold at the same time. So some of them will will make a nice neat twist fold and some of them won't play along. So you have to you have to find which ones aren't folding in and just encourage them to fold in the right way. Um, Sometimes if it starts moving but one of them is hung up, you'll, you'll find you have to turn it over and look from the base. So now what's happening here is one of them is hung up a little bit, so I'm going to find the fold that's missing and just push it in from the base so that it folds neatly.
and the magic of this construction is just that uh, that marvelous moment when it all just folds together and snaps into place. There we go. It's now folded into place, and so I just have to tidy it up a little bit by pushing it and and pressing it into place. So now this one that I've made is slightly higher, slightly taller, and slightly thinner than the other one, so it fits inside. There you go. And we have a tightly fitting box. You'll see it fits quite snugly, quite tightly, so it doesn't just fall open. Um, you actually have to get a, a fingernail under the base to pull it out. Depending on how much difference you have between your folds, whether you fold a full eighth, whether you fold a, an eighth or something even smaller on the other one, you can make it fit less snugly. But there you have it. Hexagonal gift box done.